Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing another install on the Type R. I have here the Wrinkle Red Mishimoto Aluminum Overflow Tank for the cooling system on this car. So the stock coolant tank on this car, the overflow, is plastic and that tends to expand and contract in the engine bay. With that, a lot of them seem to then end up having a leak at the seam. So as a preventative measure, and obviously just to make the engine bay look a little bit better, we're gonna go ahead and replace it with the aluminum one. I think that not only is it going to have more longevity to it than the plastic one, but the plastic one's not exactly white either. It's kind of an off-white color. It's not as attractive. So depending on how you use your CTR, this is either A, beneficial, because if you're tracking the car, it's getting very hot in that engine engine bay and it's definitely going to be expanding and contracting your plastic tank but otherwise even if you're just going for aesthetic purposes then you can change it just to get this look i chose red because most of the things that i've put in the engine bay so far are red trying to not add too much extra color to this car since it's already quite loud with the red um, it does come in a wrinkle black color as well so let's go ahead, get the car uncovered and start this install. I'm hoping it's gonna be pretty easy. The only other thing that I have kind of got confusion about is on Mishimoto's website, they claim that you need to bleed the car afterwards, but on their video, they do not bleed the car. And in the comments, when someone asked about the install and bleeding, they literally said that the car self bleeds and that it doesn't need to be bled. So. I tried watching some other videos and no one seems to be bleeding the car afterwards. So I'm a little unsure about the bleeding process. Maybe one of you guys could comment down below. Did you bleed your car afterwards? Did you not? Is this car actually a self bleeding system? Um, I'd love to know and I'd like to be able to let other people know because I'm definitely a little nervous about are we bleeding the system or are we not at the end of this? So. Um, Let's go ahead and do this install and, and hopefully it goes smooth and see what happens. the stock tank obviously it's kind of that yellowy green plastic look to it just not as attractive as what the Mishimoto one's going to look like so I went ahead and got one of the little magnetic dishes put that down with the um, grips for the little hose clamps so that we can get those opened and moved as well as I put a couple of little I'm not sure if you can see them but I put a couple of little excess bolts in there that's so that I can put those in the end of these pipes when we pull them out to stop them from leaking. Um, Mishimoto's video shows taking the whole underside of the car apart and draining it from the bottom, but I feel like that's just way too much work. So I'm gonna try to do my best to disconnect it all, hopefully not spill too much and not have to do all the labor involved with taking apart, putting the car up on jacks number one taking apart the whole car underneath to simply drain that. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, relieve any pressure in case there's any in it, and then go ahead, undo the bolts, and then have that loose so that I can kind of move it around, and then try to get these hoses off and get them sealed up with either a bolt down in them or with a clamp so that they're out of the way while we go ahead and do the install. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so we're gonna need a 10 mil with a little extension. Uh, this is just the one that I was able to find. And then obviously we're gonna need the clamps to get the, um, to be able to loosen up these little clamps on the ends of the hoses. And before we do that, I'm gonna just try loosening the whole thing, then remove these. So there's two 10 millimeter bolts, one there and one right there at the back. If I can kind of wide shot and show you guys. So literally one is going to be behind that, the little cap, and the other one is down here on the side. So let's go ahead and get started with removing those. Okay, so I'm filming on my own today. 
So sorry about the angle. I literally had to stick my camera up on my big detailing cabinet so that I can give you guys a good angle of what I'm doing or hopefully it's a decent angle. I'm also going to have my iPhone set recording as well to get a closer up shot. So I'll try to merge those two things together. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove the two 10 mils. There's a little bit of a tight fit with the socket with the blitz shrub bar, but um, I think you just need to be careful if you happen to have a shrub bar as to not hit it with your tool. Okay, so there's the two 10 mils out. Okay, so at this point, as you can see, I have the two 10 mils out of right there and then the one behind it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to take off this clamp, pull it back a little bit. And then for now, just in case I did put a bolt in this one, I don't really believe that this one should have anything in it or leak. It's actually the top one here and the lower one that I'm concerned about. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull this one off, go ahead, put a bolt in that one, and then try to wiggle this out to get the bottom one and hopefully we don't make a big mess. Just a little FYI, I grabbed a couple of old rags so that just in case anything does spill, I'm able to quickly get it up and that there's not coolant all over the engine bay. So let's hopefully get this done smoothly and not have a bunch of leakage so we can start putting on the Mishimoto. Okay, so nothing came out of that line, but I am gonna go ahead and just put something in it just in case. So I found a little rubber cover to put on this so that as I'm tipping this around, since it is full, it won't sit and pour out into the engine bay. They're from this little packet that we had in our garage. So that kind of worked to cap that off. As you can see, I've got this um, bolt in this one and just trying to keep it elevated so it doesn't keep spilling out. And I've got another bolt in this one, just kind of doing the exact same thing. And right now, so the, last hose the bottom hose actually runs right down under there nice if this would focus um and it's running kind of down through here
That was my daughter's hand. Okay, so this is it all bolted back in, finally installed. This little tiny hole right here is so that you can check the coolant level. I find it to be a little bit hard to see into to check, um, but you do notice it turned a little bit blue compared to what it was empty. And the cap is on now. I just stuck with the cap that came with it, the Mishimoto cap. So that's about it for this. I think we actually did pretty good. We didn't spill a whole ton. We went ahead and topped it off so it's at the right level. So now we'll just go ahead, turn the car on, let it run for a minute. Just make sure all looks good with the temps. Okay, so that's a wrap for this video. It was a very smooth install other than, like I said, I tried to cheat the system and I did, and I didn't pull apart the whole bottom and drain the overflow tank from underneath so that it would just be a very clean and quick and easy to pull it out. But the reason I didn't do that was because the amount of time it takes to get the car up on jacks, take apart the whole underside, I figured I could put some towels around, hopefully disconnect it and quickly kind of bung it back up in order to not have like a bunch of spills. I ended up having my daughter come out right when I was ready to pull it to kind of help. Number one, I was having a hard time. The top hose was really easy to get off. The thicker bottom hose was actually a real pain in the butt to get off. And it took uh, her woman power, she is super strong, to get that off for me. And so she was able to pull that one off. And then we quickly just tried to kind of put our hand over the pipe and over the hole in the uh, overflow tank and able to go ahead and pour all of that coolant out into a brand new water bottle so that I could re-put it back in to the new one. So that was probably the only difficult part of this whole installation. Otherwise, it's literally a 10 millimeter socket needed, two 10 millimeter bolts, pull it out in a hose clamp, remove the hose clamps, take it off, and then go ahead and refill it. I did not end up having to bleed the car like I was concerned about in the beginning. I went ahead and just started the car, let it run for about 15 minutes. I didn't notice anything. I'm going to try to take it out for a drive today as well, just to double check, but I do believe it is a self-bleeding system. So if I have any updates on that, I'll update this or I'll put it in the comments. But from what I can tell right now, it was holding a perfect temperature. There was no reason for me to believe that it needed to be bled. So with all that being said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this inspires you to get out and work on your car. And I will see you guys in the next one.